Okay, this lesson is for section 7.6. We're going to be learning how to use synthetic division to divide polynomials. So this is the other method that we're going to learn besides the long division that we've talked about in our previous lesson. So our main objective is to divide polynomial expressions using synthetic division. Now, I think you guys are really going to like synthetic division. You're definitely going to like it more than long division, but the problem is it doesn't always work, okay? It only works when we divide by a linear binomial. So if you look in our first example here, we can use synthetic division because this is a linear binomial, meaning we have a term here that is to the first degree, which makes it linear. All right, so let's start on number one. When we set up synthetic division, you're gonna take a division bar and you're gonna flip it upside down and you're gonna make it a little bit bigger. You need it to be big enough so that you can fit at least two lines of work here on the inside. Um, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the coefficients of your dividend and you're gonna place them in the top row here. So I have the coefficient three, then negative two, then negative 13, and positive 14. Then I'm going to place the opposite number, this constant number is gonna go on the outside. So the opposite of negative two is a positive two. That Remember, you have to make sure that it's the opposite of whatever that constant is in your binomial. All right, now, um, the first term here always gets dropped. If you don't drop that term, things are gonna get a little wonky for you. But you just drop that term. Now, anything that ends up in the bottom here, like that three here, needs to be multiplied by that two on the outside. So we take three times two, and we write that product underneath the next term here. So we write a six underneath. So again, I'm taking three times two, I get six, and I place that here. So it goes like this, boom, boom, like that, okay? All right, now, I add negative two plus six. So if you need to put a, like a little um, addition symbol on the out, or like right on the inside here, so you remember you're always adding the terms that are appearing vertically underneath one another. So we take negative two and six and we get four. Remember this number on the bottom always gets multiplied by that two. And then we write that product right underneath the next term. So we get two times four, which is eight. We place an eight underneath. Now we take and we take the sum, remember you're adding the terms on the inside here. Negative 13 plus 8 is 5, negative 5, sorry. And then we take this negative 5, again, we multiply it by the number on the outside. So negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. And we write that negative 10 right underneath. Now, 14 and negative 10 gives me 4. All right, so what does this all mean? Okay, these numbers below represent the coefficients of the polynomial that is one degree less than the number that you started with. So, for example here, since we have x cubed, this represents 3x squared. This term here represents 4x, which just goes in descending order. And then this is just negative 5 because we have x to the 0, so negative 5 here is the constant. This last term here is the remainder. So we have a remainder here of 4 over x minus 2. So we just did what we would normally do in long division, which, which would take us a couple of minutes to do. We do that fairly quickly, okay? So that's our first synthetic division problem. Let's work on our next one. All right, remember, we're gonna take the dividend. We're gonna write the coefficients here. Now, I notice I've got it, it's pretty long here because this um, x cubed term has a coefficient of one, and then we skip right to eight, the constant. We're missing our quadratic and our linear term. Just like in long division, we need to make sure we have placeholders here. So we have one followed by zero, then zero, and then eight. So this is x cubed, zero x squared, zero x, and our constant eight. Now on the outside, we're gonna place a positive two, and then we start with our synthetic division. Remember, this first term always drops. You gotta make sure you drop that first term. Now the number on the bottom here needs to be multiplied by the number on the outside, one times two is two, so I place that two underneath. Remember, you're adding these numbers inside, so the vertical numbers get added together, zero plus two is two. We multiply two times two, we get four. Zero plus four is four. Now I'm multiplying two times four and I get eight. Bring down now a 16. All right, again, this is gonna be my remainder here. These represent the coefficients of a, a polynomial that is one degree less than the degree of the numerator. So we've got, this is one x squared plus two x plus four plus a remainder of 16 over x minus two. 
that is the quotient of x cubed plus 8 over x minus 2. Okay, problem 3 is unfortunately a problem where we can't actually use synthetic division. The reason is, if we look at our divisor, this is not a linear binomial, right? This is quadratic, so we can't actually use synthetic division, which means, unfortunately, we have to use long division. I would like you guys to still try this problem and make sure you check with the key, okay? Just to get practice with long division. All right, in example four, uh, this problem is on here because we switch back now to a linear binomial in the divisor. However, this linear divisor has a lead coefficient of two. Now, a lot of textbooks and a lot of teachers even will tell you you can't use synthetic division if you don't have a linear binomial with a lead coefficient of one. If you look at the last two examples that we worked on, um, the denominator, the uh, divisor, had a coefficient in front of that x term of one, a positive one. Here we have a two. Now, like I said, some teachers will tell you you can't use synthetic division, but I'm gonna show you a way that you can use it, but it is trickier. So sometimes they prefer you to not use it at all because they have to remember too many things, um, but I think it's good to give you all your options and let you choose what to pick. So you could use long division here, but I'm gonna show you two different ways how you can use synthetic division here as well. All right, so again, we, we can't use a, uh, a divisor here if the lead coefficient is two, so we're gonna change it into one where our lead coefficient is one. So I'm gonna divide by two here, which means I also need to divide that term by two. So I end up with x plus three halves now as that divisor. So then when I set up my synthetic division, one method of doing that is to use the same coefficients here, eight, 10, negative 13, and negative 10. And then place still the opposite of that term on the outside, so that would give me negative three halves. And then I continue my synthetic division like normal. So I bring down that eight. I multiply negative three halves times eight. I get negative 12. I add these terms in, inside the vertical terms here and I get negative two. I multiply negative two times negative three halves and I get positive uh, three. I add negative three and three together, 13 and three together and I get negative 10. I multiply negative 10 times negative three halves and I get positive 15. I add negative 10 and 15 and I get a positive 5. All right, now when I look at these terms, um, remember this is supposed to represent the, the term, the coefficient of a term that is one degree less than our numerator here, that x cubed. So that should be 8x squared. Now if we were dividing using long division and we had a uh, binomial here on the outside with x plus 3 halves on the outside of a long division problem, then certainly we would say x fits into 8x cubed 8x squared times. But remember, our original problem doesn't have an x plus 3 halves. It has a 2x plus 3. Clearly, 2x does not fit into 8x cubed 8x squared times. So these coefficients are off, and they're off by a factor of 2. We need to remember, and this is why teachers don't necessarily like their students doing this. They'd rather them just use long division here. Um, but you have to remember that you have to divide all of these coefficients here by 2. So we're going to take each coefficient, divide them by 2, and we get 4x squared minus 1x. So again, I'm just dividing all of these by 2. Okay, And I'm actually going to leave off the fact that I'm not going to divide the remainder by 5. Let me show you what would happen, and I hope I don't confuse you even more. But let's say I did divide that remainder by, by 2. So I have 5 halves over... Remember, we're using x plus 3 halves here over um, that, that binomial, x plus 3 halves. Now, if I want to simplify this fraction a little bit, I have 5 halves divided by x plus 3 halves, which is really like having 5 halves multiplied by 1 over x plus 3 halves. Now, I can multiply the denominators and the numerators. That would give me 5 on top, and on, in the denominator, I'd end up with 2x plus 2 times 3 halves is 3. So as you can see, if I write that as 5 halves over x plus 3 halves, I end back up with a remainder here of 5 over 2x plus 3. So you actually don't need to divide out your end remainder here to end up with your final expression here. So this is the quotient of our beginning problem here, and I'm going to do it a second way. All right, so let me erase... So now, when I account for the fact that I'm dividing out that 2, 
um, in the denominator here to make that x plus 3 halves. I'm going to do the same thing with the coefficients in the numerator. So I'm going to take each of those coefficients here, change that to a 4, 5, then negative 13 halves, and negative 5. So I'm dividing out each of these coefficients here so that I don't have to do it at the end. Okay. Now I keep that negative 3 halves on the outside. And then I'm going to do the synthetic division just like normal. So I drop that first term down. So I have 4 times negative 3 halves. So that's okay that we have a fraction. Don't freak out. You've, got, you've done lots of stuff with fractions before. We end up with negative 6 here. 5 plus negative 6 gives me negative 1. Then negative 3 halves times negative 1 gives me positive 3 halves. If I add negative 13 halves and 3 halves, I get negative 10 halves, which I'm going to simplify and write that as negative 5. Then I'm going to take negative 5 and multiply it by negative 13 halves, and I get a positive 15 halves. So sometimes people don't like this method because you end up with a lot of fractions, um, but I still think it's factor faster than long division. So now we're going to add negative 5 plus 15 halves. Remember, you need a common denominator here, so I'm going to change that to 10 halves. So I have negative 10 halves plus 15 halves, which gives me positive 5 halves. All right, if you look at your coefficients now, see how they match? You've got a 4, negative 1, negative 5, and then that 5 halves, we already did the work to show how 5 halves over my um, new binomial x plus 3 halves, how that ends up being 5 over x plus 3 halves. Okay, so in this case, when you divide out your numerators here, um, you can end up, or, or, I'm sorry, when you divide out the coefficients of your divisor, your dividend, geez, I keep screwing up the terms here. When you divide out the coefficients in method two, you don't have to worry about what your answer is in the end, but if you want for your remainder, so that you don't have to do all this crazy fraction work, remember to multiply it back by the, uh, the original number that you divided by. Okay, that'll turn that into 5 over my original divisor x plus 3. Okay, so that's how your remainder over here. Now, when you don't account for dividing out those um, coefficients in the numerator, then you need to make sure at the end that you do that. And then when you get to your remainder, you can forget about dividing out that coefficient because it ends up going into the denominator anyhow to result in this particular um, remainder. Okay? So hopefully I didn't just blow up your brain. Um, I think I might have, though, because I can see why it would be very intimidating and confusing to follow all of what I did. So let me recap real quick, okay? I started with a binomial whose leak coefficient was not 1. So this 2 here means that I can turn it into a leak coefficient of 1 by dividing it out. So I take that negative 3 halves now, because I take the opposite of that term here, place it on the outside, and I use synthetic division just like normal. But then I realize that these coefficients are off by a factor of 2 because I just divided it by 2 here in the denominator. I need to do the same thing with these um, coefficients here. So that, that's how I resulted in 4x squared, negative 1x, negative 5. And then for the denominator, what I noticed that was that when I used 5 halves, when I took that number and I divided it by 2, and then I divided it by our new divisor, x plus 3 halves, that 2 ended up going into the denominator anyhow to create 5 over 2x plus 3 halves. So I can ignore the fact that I need to divide out the 2 and just call that my remainder, 5 over 2x plus 3. Same thing goes when I um, do account for the dividing by 2 and I change those coefficients here, divide those also by 2. Once I get to my, my uh, remainder, 5 halves, I can forget about that 5 halves here by multiplying by 2 and creating the number 5. Um, again, if you do 5 halves over uh, you know, the, the x plus 3 halves here, you'll end up with 5 over 2x plus 3. Okay, So sorry to blow up your mind. I hope you like me for showing you how to use synthetic division for this, because otherwise you'd have to use long division, and that would not be fun. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, I would like you guys to try number six, because the last problem that I'm going to do with you is number five. Now, I want you to do number six and check your work with the key, because it's really important that you, you actually attempt to use synthetic division at least once on your own before you come into class tomorrow, because you're going to see that um, it's very easy to forget which terms to multiply. So I'm going to do one more with you one last time and let you guys try number six on your own. Be ready for a quiz check. Um, because this is a good one for me to do since it's so quick. So if you know how to do it, you should be fine. Um, but make sure you at least come prepared enough to do this problem here in class. All right. 
So number five, the reason why this one's here is because, as you can see, we are missing a term, and we need a placeholder in synthetic division just like we need one in long division. So because I'm missing that quadratic term, when I set up that long division here, I have a coefficient of 1 and then 0 to represent the x squared. So I have 1, 0, 2, and then negative 15. And I'll place a positive 2 here on the outside. Um, I think it's just coincidental that we used a bunch of problems with an x minus 2 in the divisor. So don't think that you can only use x minus 2. You can use lots of different divisors. Okay, but anyhow, um, I'm going to drop this first term down. Remember, whatever's in the bottom, you're going to multiply by the number on the outside. So 1 times 2 is 2. 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. And 2 plus 4 is 6. 2 times 6 is 12. And negative 15 plus 2 is negative 3. Now these represent the coefficients of my new uh, quotient here, x squared plus 2x plus 6, then minus 3 over x minus 2. So this here is the quotient of x cubed plus 2x minus 15 over x minus 2. So big story here is make sure that you use placeholders, all right? That's the end of the lesson. Again, please check your answer and try number six. Nice job. I will see you in class tomorrow.